Welcome to Teacher Teaching Teachers, and we are going to do some playful work tonight. A workshop is what I imagine. Here's here's what I, here's um. So I I just want to I'm going to ask. I'm glad he's here to explain it because I'm going to ask um, Bob Montgomery to kind of explain what he wants to do. He thinks he thinks that a couple of us need to get together and do a plan, and I agree with him. We will do that. But I'm actually going to do it without a plan tonight. <laughs> What's oh. the? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not oh. too surprised. You're not too surprised, are you? <laughs> no. You <laughs> okay. totally, really, but, you're, totally, but, you're making me but, do the work. You're making me. It's like I want to just be a passive learner here. <laughs> All right. I know. And Miss Miss Bentham, I keep saying Miss Bentham because her students here, but oh, that's all right. Brooklyn is cool. Yeah, I mean okay they know Bonnie. my name is Bonnie. They okay. they sometimes call me Triple B. But... Okay. <laughs> triple B. I'll do that. Triple Triple B. <laughs> triple B um, mentioned that I when she saw the announcement, I was scaring people away. But Bob, what is what is the overall interest? Um, what what we want right. to focus on? Um, maybe right. not this time, but eventually. Yes. I'm, I'm going to throw out an essential question for the group that I hope will serve as an opportunity to reflect and share ideas. And here's the question. Generative AI offers teachers, the last, teachers and students the last best chance to regain control of the profession, of the pursuit of education. We are at this incredible juncture where we can see teachers and students really holding on or actually regaining control or our various technology interests are going to take it through AI as the pathway and continue to wrest the, the control of teaching and learning away from teachers. That's my, it, 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 is this true that generative AI offers a great opportunity for teachers and students to regain control of education at the potential risk of losing it to the technology forces that will and are already clearly jumping on this opportunity to manage classrooms further. You want you first go. reactions to that? Yes, sir. Any reactions? I, okay. I And I, I want to make sure, Aditya, and is it uh, Roland? Or Ro no. Rohan. Yeah, Rohan, are you, is that you? It is you. Yeah. You guys are here together on one mic. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Can... Uh, we ended up, we had to, he had to come over for, to work on a project. So we decided, you know what, you could just stay over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Call. These guys are eighth graders and the they're putting together a presentation about the ethical use of AI. Do you, do you, um, do you understand Bob Montgomery's question there? Why don't you guys start? What did what did you hear so, in this question? My initial reaction was I was kind of just trying to put it in my own words. Like AI gives the opportunity for everybody, teachers, but especially teachers, to regain kind of control over the classroom. But then simultaneously, the forces that be, the corporations who all have a stake in this, all could also potentially derail that and drive it further from teachers since that's kind of the question we're dealing with here the crossroads we're at that's that's a pretty good is that okay bud yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so that's great what, what do you think about that i think first thought definitely I, th I think it's interesting and i think that understanding and i think that even our presentation that we're doing is going to play a key role in that which is understanding the ways to use ai and the ways not to use ai like the ways where you shouldn't really use AI at all and the ways where AI can definitely be an assistant. And I think that'll definitely help kind of help teachers regain control of the classroom. Whereas if there's no boundaries set with AI, what we can do, what we can't do, uh, then I kind of feel like teachers might end up losing control in the end. But I, I, at the same time, students should be free to explore like cool, cool. try out new things like what I I'm going I'm going to I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> we'll come back. Rohan, did you have a quick thought? Um about what? Question. <laughs> oh, Anything. No. Okay. Cool. Christina, are you here? 
are you there? Are you passive? Are you coming back? Good, good. Um, so I'll say, I'll say, Bob, I love the question, and you knew knew I would, and I'm just going around here, and and just to say that um, that's what keeps me motivated. I mean, I think I just wrote I just wrote to uh, Sam Reed, who was asking about a very similar question, that um, you know AI is such a powerful thing, but it could be used for good or bad, and um, you know good or bad is not even the right way to think about it, but. Um, I think if we get in there with our own platforms and our APIs, and um, yeah. like um, we can we can manage this better than any of the tech giants will be able to. So that's my quick reaction to that. Um, Brooklyn, what what are you understanding from all this? <laughs> okay, number one, could you restate the question, please? <laughs> so, Brooklyn, the the, the question is. Do you agree with this statement or what 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 reactions do you have to this statement that AI represents an opportunity for teachers and, and their students to really regain control of a process that's been slowly you know taken from them? This is the process of teaching and learning. I was in the classroom 20 five years ago, and I had a lot of autonomy and a lot of things have changed since then. And, it, it, and, and if they, if this continues, and if AI somehow continues to support the, you know, the, the lack of control that teachers and students really have about what they get to do in their classrooms, then that would be a, a, a bad result. That would be AI potentially being used for, for, for bad. For good, it could actually become something that teachers and students use to actually take control, to lead their own, to, to become more agents of what's going on in the, in the classroom, as opposed to recipients of policies and, and decisions that other people have made. Um, okay. Well, like you were saying, AI can be used for both good or bad, but it can only, I'll say it can only really work um, Like it can't just nothing. It needs an input and output. Is basically what I'm trying to say. So you need to be able to control it to be able to. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain yeah. it. That, like what I'm trying start. to say. That's a good start. And we're just getting quick, fast reactions. So that's great, Brooklyn. Thank you. If you have other things to say as we go around, that's great. Uh, Miss Bentham. Yes. Um, well, he, I think. Uh, Bob, you hit the nail on the head. If teachers don't get get what they need from it and conform it to transform their own classrooms or their own teaching styles or their own school culture, then here we are again being told what to do and, and something else just being laid upon us to do. Um, however, I think it's very important that teachers <laughs> not fear AI. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, in order for them to be able to use it to benefit themselves and the students that they serve. Chris. Yeah, I mean, I can only speak from limited perspective of my classroom, but uh, I mean, I have faith in my students that I currently uh, teach right now. Most of them seem pretty uh, critical users, I'd say, of the AI that we've introduced. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I don't, f there are other forces at work. I understand larger forces like the, the people who make, let's say, magic school AI, um, that I think if we relegate too much decision making to those AI um, tools, then it could be tempting for larger forces to kind of take control of systems of education. Yeah. Um, at the ground level, what I'm seeing though is, is pretty critical use though of the tools from the students. Mm -hmm. Bob, do you want to 
comment on your own question? No, just let's keep going. Let's hit okay. your other Dave? reactions. Um, sure. There's so much to say. What everyone's sharing is uh, so on point. The thing that I'm struck by is um, I remember when the flip classroom arrived and people were, kids were sitting in classrooms working on their computers and teachers were, were moving up and down the aisles of their rows, so to speak. And now we've got this technology that's very fluid and it's all about natural language and communicating possibilities. And it's, as Bonnie, you're saying, it's inviting that educator to figure out how to make her understanding of priorities and her understanding of her community and her objectives integrated into the interface. And the same is true for students. They can ask questions of the software on their terms. And so there's a real active learning moment that's happening right now that's, if it's done with a, some care, it becomes a very powerful way to recapture that engagement. And it really centers the experience on the learner and on the teacher as a collaborative team. But it requires a lot of really engaged workflow. You can't just assign something, send it home and check a box. No English teacher does that anyway, because writing is challenging and complex. But the fact that we're talking with language and both the user or the learner and the teacher as the coach are, into, are using the same tools to develop their own ideas and share them creates a real interesting opening. Um, and that's, that's very inspiring to me. I think that's what holds my attention among lots of other things. So there's that. Thank you. Debbie, how about what? Um, I think the question that you asked was black and white. I think there's a lot more nuance. There are a lot of people in technology who run companies like myself that are not on the bad guy team. In addition, I think there are plenty of teachers who don't know how to teach. And that's not to say that I should be teaching them from my business perspective. But I think education is not going to be solved with technology. And no matter what that technology is, the forces that want to make money and the forces that want to use it for open access and good sharing and community are going to continue to replicate the exact same kinds of things that happened with social media. I mean, I'm old enough to have seen the command line and the optimism that there was among people who were learning to communicate across boundaries using just the command line. And um, we, we have a larger societal problem that's not going to be solved by technology. That said, I, had, I know of plenty of schools in which the teachers and the students are working together using AI really in very inquiry generative ways together. And I also know of other schools mm -hmm. And it's particularly sad when you see it in public schools where there is such a fear of privacy and copyright and plagiarism and all those things. Right. And it's not because the public schools are bad schools. I'm a product of public school education. It's because um, there are these other things that are happening in our society that make them gun shy including book banning and everything else you want to label. So do I believe that open source and um, collaborative work with teachers and students is a really good thing? I do. But that doesn't necessarily mean that students will learn deeply, and it doesn't necessarily mean that teachers will teach well. And Christina was coming in and out, and if if it's if it's an end time, Christina, feel free to interrupt us anytime you like. Go go ahead. Did you... Hi, yeah, we're eating dinner. Okay. Um, Christina and Jack. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah okay. That's true. Oh. Hi there. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack, but um, just to, I think something that um date. Uh, David said, struck me when the teachers and the students are using similar tools. And I feel like that's an important writing project theory of action is that you write in order to teach writing. 
And so, because then you can be in the same conversation around the creative process, right? And so that feels really important to me um, in this mix. And when we, but when we separate that out, um, you know, uh, there's, I think there's a lot of need to continue to ask questions and grapple at every turn. And, you know, Chris, I'm kind of like, I, I wonder, you know, it's like we can ask critical questions, but I start to worry when we can't even tell the difference between fake and not, and, you know, real. And like, what what are the questions we're going to keep asking? Like, I, mean, I think you, I, I believe you in your students also and in their critical questions. And I think like this could get complicated really fast on this level that we're not fully prepared for. So I guess mm -hmm. sometimes I just wonder about that. Like, how do we keep asking the right questions and 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 when do we sort of say like, oh boy, we don't know. <laughs> and you know, what happens at those intersections? So I'm just like, I don't know. Those are things I'm thinking about. Do Anybody you want to add in? Go ahead, yeah. Uh, uh, hey, um, I was just thinking about te technology in general. I mean, technology and, and, and moves towards standardization have, have have wanted to scale. Everything's wanted to scale, and with scale comes a, a degree of like standardization, and and that's that wrestling of control from the yeah. control and agency from the, the the individual from the in the individual classroom. And I'm wondering if you just occurred to me could 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 you make an argument that unlike all kinds of other educational technologies, I've been in that industry for 25 years, uh, that 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 the the large language models could be kind of anti-scale they could they could return you to a local place beca because mm -hmm. of a degree of of, of, of of you know the way you can individually interact with them and 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 make them sort of serve your purposes as opposed to being drawn into into a scaled ecosystem where 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 where, where ed tech and, and and where other technologies want 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 to pull you into their scaled world as opposed to your local world so that was kind of the way I began thinking about it. Cool, cool. On the table, by the way, there's an article. Where I, I don't remember the title or the author right now, but um, over there, right by the now comment banner, um, and, and maybe we can use it as an example as we go here, but it's an article that asks the question that I think Debbie, you brought up, um, that suggests that we don't want to make the same mistakes that we made with social media with AI, and I, I actually think that's an interesting sort of uh, warning framework to, as part of your question there. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, but here's what I want to propose, if that's okay, Bob. I want to I want to go and make a GPT thinking partner together tonight, um, and and if you want to go off and make one yourself, that's great. But it's been a while here, and this is one of the things um, that Bob's email to me made me think, it's been a while here since we've made one together, and then you've went off, gone off and make one yourself. But the, the eighth graders over at WAMS have been making them like wild, and they've been teaching us, and we've been learning things from how they do that. And I've been continuing to think of things um, and add them in. Here's one example trans um, that happened for me this weekend. Um, I started to think about trans languaging, which is, you know, be, being able to use all sorts of languages in the classroom kind of at the same time in different places. And so I thought about our, our thinking partners, can they be trans languaging thinking partners? And at first they don't work that well, but if you just put a simple piece of code in, not code, sorry, funny. If you put a simple sentence in that says, hey, whatever language the question is posed in, use that language for your answer, it immediately shifts, to no matter what language I, I practice with, it immediately shifts to that language, which I think is pretty kind of amazing so that all of the thinking partners we've set up, um, the student can write whatever their home language is, and they'll get that home language back um, from the thinking partner. So that's just one example of sort of an innovation 
that that some of us are doing and we want to share that kind of stuff more is that set up any thoughts or quite okay <laughs> that's the response the um I, and I that's a said, response from me because i yeah, yeah. all a different student the language speakers and i always try to have them honor their their native language always yeah and in fact the chimes the, the translanguaging folks like Cecilia Espinoza, who um, is somebody from the New York City Writing Project and Lehman, and, and uh, I was rereading some of her work around all this, um, would argue that, that by using all of the languages that we, that we have in our classroom, everybody gets enriched, right? So figuring out how to do that online is important. And just to say that we have a box where you could say, Hey, my my native or sorry, my home language is right, and and it does work that way too, but I wanted to figure out another way for it to work kind of automatically, and so that kind of playing around answers another question that Bob had, which is how can we get people using this stuff more and building them? I want to I want to shift. Uh, please keep interrupting me, but I, Aditya, are you ready? I want to show off or talk about your um, side switcher. And as I'm, oh, yeah, up, that. Yeah, as uh, I'm bringing it up, I'm going to bring it up and, and, and we're going to be able to look at it. Here's here's why I want to do this. I want to think about what what a prompt is. And if you're like, I, I know this already, I want to go off and, and experiment and make one myself. Please go do that um, if you know how to do that. But if you want to stay with us and watch, you can too. Go ahead, Aditya, as I'm bringing it up. Uh, yeah, just just give me a sec. I uh, I'm gonna I bring it up. I'm gonna bring I, it up. I have oh, it up already. Here yeah, because we're using Rohan's computer and he doesn't have access to this. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I had to leave the meeting, but it was nice you. meeting you all. Thank you. Um, yes. Bye. 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 Come back anytime. Bye, Brooklyn. Bye, Brooklyn. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye, Brooklyn. Bye. Aditya, do you see the prompt here? Yeah. Um, okay. Now I've added a couple of things, but so let, I'll go back to that. But let's start with this this line here. Look at a debate. Can you read it to us and then kind of comment as you're doing that? Uh, look at a debate oh. argument from the point of view of someone who vehemently disagrees with your side, and come up with five reasons why that are why the argument is bad. Uh, Remember that you hate the point of view that is being presented and everything it means it stands for. Analyze everything for any small excuse. If the argument is airtight and can't be defended in any way, say so. However, if, if, if there's even one small hint of disagreement, mention it. So it was kind of two things that kind of inspired me to make this partner. So yesterday, or was it the day before, one of those days, I forgot. I mean, I was doing research for um, the debate that's happening this Saturday. Um, and... I was looking up statistics and I realized I found a statistic saying that uh, it was a survey saying that 90% of the topics, I think I've shown it a few times. So for those of you who know it is one of the topics we're doing is that human cloning uh, does more harm, uh, should be banned on a national level. And so I was looking up statistics for that and I found that 90% of adults think that human cloning is unethical. So I was like, well, there's a nine out of, there's around a nine, let's just say, generously say, like, eight out of 10 chance that the judge doesn't like our point of view, doesn't believe this is a good thing at all. Uh, and those are not great odds, especially when the argument. And so we are arguing, uh, I'm talking for the opposition side, so the other side. So if I'm arguing that it, sh that it shouldn't be banned and I have a judge that doesn't think it's ethical, then I have a very low chance to win that debate. So I was like, well, I have to make sure my argument is airtight. And then on, on, on a slightly unrelated note, I was looking at YouTube videos and I found a video series from a former Harvard debate coach about uh, about arguments. And it kind of mentioned something about how uh, how debate how debaters in the Harvard debate team, what they would do is they would get a notebook before right before their debate, not 10, 15 minutes before. And they would kind of list out reasons why they, why they wouldn't win, like, and uh, what the other side could say, all the other side's arguments and how to refute that. And I think the name I use, Side Switch, came directly from that video and what the debate coach said, and that's kind of how I named the partner. 
So I was like, mm-hmm. so I kind of put those two together. Most adults will hate my side of the beat, my, my side I'm going to argue. And this is what some, some debaters do. And I was like, well, I'll try this. And I kind of created a partner that their whole point of view, their whole thing is that they hate every single, every, uh, they hate every single argument, every single side. So Aditya, let's get some feedback or thoughts, questions you have for Aditya about how he created this. Um, and as you're re- getting ready for that question or that feedback, let me just mm. say this, please respond to the question or statement in the language of that question or statement is something I added in, right? To, I explained that earlier so that that, that happens um, automatically for the, no matter what language you use. Um, here's, yeah, yeah, here's, feedback thoughts, here's, yeah. Here's my question. Good. Aditya, why did you create this as a thinking partner or GPT instead of just putting it aside in a catalog of really great prompts that you could use anytime you wanted to? I mean, the thing with the way now- wait, 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 let's not assume you got to explain the context you mean there. Uh, really great prompts for what? For anything, for any use. No, but 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 Bob, but going back to your question about you know how we can take control here, when we assume that those prompts are going to be used in Cloud, Claude, or Gemini, or ChatGPT, we're yeah. we're like we're like laying down to the tech people when we do that. So I think we need to at least identify that that's what you're well, suggesting is well, that no, what you're I'm, suggesting because there's no, a I'm, different I'm answer. suggesting yeah. by putting <laughs> i don't in, mean to be con- contentious <laughs> well no I just, yeah, yeah. I, I just went to our thinking partners list and i see you know yeah. hundreds of thinking partners and okay. i'm thinking well what's what's the definition of a good use of great prompts do we okay. want to create a thinking partner which is a thing which is static and is a thing that lives in you know in this communal database or do we just want to have our own library of great prompts okay, to use I'll, with, I'll let, with any I'll let technology, you ask the i'm sorry any technology on. we might have in other words what what's what i'm just wondering here is what's the logic for put, making a thinking partner versus just having a, a great collection of prompts that i use when i need them good aditya do you have a thought on it so the way I'm understanding your question is why did I make put this on a communal database versus why did I keep this private and just put it into something else when I need to do it? Yes. And I kind of think the first thing is that number one, I have many friends and stuff who they've either created now. And I have a friend who doesn't have Mr. Ronsky as a teacher, but he saw what I was doing with now comment and he decided to join it and I added him to my group. If you've seen that. Uh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So, and so, so there, I have multiple friends who are on the debate team who use yeah. now comment. And if I need to share this thinking partner with them, if I'm, a, if I'm on their team in the future, it's much more useful to do this. Uh, and I'm yeah. sure, like the only real downside is because when, because teams from our school will never compete against other teams from our school. The only reason that I wouldn't want to do this is in case the, in case there's people from <laughs> uh, other schools who, Find my thinking partner and use it. Right. That's really the only danger that, that I really face in that. It's but okay. uh, <laughs> I, Debbie, Debbie yeah. you want to ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have um <laughs> I like the logic that you talked mm-hmm. about for deciding you the research you did and then the logic that you put in place to decide what you were gonna make this thinking partner do. I'm wondering whether in, implicit in that logic, there's a flaw in your argument that made you say something to the chat, you know, to the thinking partner that is not going to get you where you want to be. And let me explain what I mean. You said that you were worried that the judge would probably be against your arguments. And that's an assumption, maybe that's not true that the judge has been coached to to do that kind of work. But another uh, piece of your argument had to do with your recognition that um, what you needed from from this thinking partner was um, the, uh, the, the, the best versions of the arguments you could create 
that would be against the arguments that you had. And I'm wondering if you think about your audience, think about what would be really a sly, very recognizing, recognizing what people believe and don't believe, that maybe what you're looking for is not the opposition arguments, but you're looking for the intersection between the pros and cons, where the pro and con people might agree. I once heard Condoleezza Rice, whom I don't even like, Say something quite brilliant, which is. She I think said, that's her middle name. No, it's okay. There's no, I, <laughs> there's, no, there's no reason, she said, for me and another country to be going like this. What I'm always looking for when I negotiate is a middle space where we can find common ground. And so, so you could ask, you could prompt your thinking partner to help you find common ground with the opposition arguments. So Aditya, do you want to get in on that? What, what do you think? I think it's an interesting idea where instead of finding the kind of putting it black and white, uh, you kind of finding the middle ground. And I think there have definitely been times where I've kind of, when normally when I debate, I, instead of trying to find a middle ground of sorts, I kind of find almost another ground like uh, for example if i'm opposition on an issue wow. i might say instead of doing this we could do this like actually for that cloning argument if i am opposition i know the proposition is most certainly going to mention one thing and that is that there is currently no legal safeguard in or at least i'm going to mention that there's currently no legal safeguard in place for clone rights like if a, if we somehow manage to create a human clone tomorrow it doesn't have the same right there's no there is no it's kind of a gray area as to what rights it has compared to us, me and everybody here. So that is kind of something where I, should, I can present where instead of outright banning this, we can instead make sure that there are safeguards so that when eventually a scientist does discover this, when eventually a human is cloned, they come into a world that already gives them some rights and so that they're not, a be that they're that they can't be used and abused and uh, that they're going to have at least a same standard of rights. And I kind of think that's kind of something instead that I could do instead of a middle ground, kind of find the other ground and I'll yeah, and how, how would you ask that in a, in, a, at, in, to make your thinking partner do that? Good question. I mean, yeah. that's, that would be interesting to me. How do you get to that place where your thinking partner is helping you see what you don't see? Um, can I just ask a question? Because this is kind of where I was headed with what I wanted to ask, and that is a little bit of background. So when I put together a prompt that was a pretty lengthy prompt to help uh, my students, to help me assess, but also my students assess some AP language essays, the process of writing a prompt is kind of like writing a rubric. So, you know, fair enough. But the process of writing the prompt and then generating it and then, you know, fine tuning like, oh, that's not what I wanted. My prompt needs to be better, I think. And I think maybe a better, better uh, able to give feedback. And so my question, Aditya, is like the process of doing this, like what we're just doing now, like, uh, you know, Debbie just said, oh, did you think about doing that? Do you feel like this is making you a better debater? Like doing the prompts, testing the prompts, now thinking and oh, how am I going to do this? You know, other ground kind of thing. What is that doing to you as a debater? Or, or you know, what do you think about that? I think it is giving me some new perspectives, new ideas that I wouldn't have thought of and wouldn't have included in my ordinary workflow for two reasons. Number one, obviously, while I'm doing this, I'm doing the calls, talking to everybody. It's kind of obviously giving me like new ideas, like what just happened a few minutes ago, but also. I, now that I'm using this, it's able to, I'm able to like speed up this workflow. I'm able to kind of generate my arguments and just keep adding on. And it gives me more time to focus. It gives me slightly more time than I would have where normally by this point, I'm still trying to construct some arguments and still putting some of that stuff together. But now for this point, aside from that, from one argument, that cloning argument, which is really difficult, I have finished most of my other arguments and I can kind of start to experiment. Like, 
I wouldn't have been able to think about all this stuff or I wouldn't have had as much time as I would have had now to think about all this stuff had I not in introduced AI into my process. And I think that this is by extension certainly making me a better debate or hopefully um, making me a better debater. Debbie, I want to come back and try to do what you asked. Could we do it? Yeah, um, I would love to do that. I, let, I don't. Let's let's, let's yeah. try. Let's actually uh, do that. I want to show something first, though, um, which is uh, I mentioned way, way at the beginning. I don't even we we're recording yet, but Sam Reed has been um, talking to me um, about what's the difference between ChatGPT and what we're doing on Now Comment, and I've tried to over the over different times. This was quite a while ago. It was beginning of February. I've tried to kind of make that argument, make that that point. Um, and then I used just a, and this is an example of how we want to see, I think we want to see our colleagues using um, GPTs. Um, and that's the, one of the big questions that Bob Montgomery asked me um, to be thinking about. Um, so back in February, I went back, recently I went back and found an argument that I made here. I had used um, David Cole's uh, machine learning and learning science advisor to give me feedback on my argument. That uh, made me think some things. And then I went out and did some other writing. Um, this is sort of my AI journal, right? Um, but then when when I saw Aditya's side switcher, uh, is that what it is? Side switch. <laughs> um, I said, I went in and said, what am I not seeing here, right? In, in this argument, and it gave me five other things to be thinking about. It kind of challenged me in interesting ways. So thank you for creating that for us. Um, interesting, um, I was a, I then took the same side switch simulator and had it switch back and give the arguments back again. Um, you see what I mean? So this gives the arguments against what I was trying to say. And then this brings up to try to argue against the arguments. So it, it, it has my head like going all over the place in terms of these different possibilities. Um, questions, thoughts? I just wanted to show you that as a possibility for, and, and um, like uh, we've just started, but in, um, in Bonnie's uh, advisory, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to show you one. This uh, we started. I think it's this one's okay. I think to show there's some that may not be. We just had them write. You know, one thing that makes you feel good about yourself, and then we had that. You know, inquiring youth respond. So that's sort of uh, one sort of quick application. But I would love to see this kind of play on um, in the discussions on now comment. Um, as as one way to use GPTs. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know what to think about that. Any thoughts, feedback? Yeah. If I've understood this correctly, you ran the argument through the side switcher, right? And then it gave you I did. arguments against, and then you ran it through the side switcher again to argue against the side switcher's arguments? Yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I should probably do that in my personal debate, uh, in, my, in the personal debate group that I have. Probably should do that. <laughs> so that, that would be interesting. This kind of because well, I'm call it, you call it a side switcher, so yeah, I know. Well, you sides. Paul, you're having your inception moment there. <laughs> I think that that could because I, I'm the chance that the opposition brings up one of these arguments, the chance that the, my opponents bring up one of at least one of the arguments that the side switcher generated. It's pretty high. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if I could find arguments against the arguments, that could save me a lot of last minute thinking on my feet and coming up with uh, half Yeah, but you know what? Outside. You know what? You, you still have to filter through what you get back. To, does that make sense? Do I really? Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I understand. Like, filtering through is something that I find extremely important, especially I've actually had a case recently where one of the arguments. It gave me an invalid statistic, the statistic. I searched it up, and I ran it through my facts and statistics checker. And the argument, no sources, nothing. There was I couldn't find it anywhere. The facts and statistics checker couldn't find anything. It was just completely made up out of thin air. 
Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, another thing that I've been excited about because it's been a problem is how some of the some of the um, thinking partners overwhelm the student, right? Especially for writing response. And I have figured out, and this, I haven't tested it enough, but just want everyone to know that we're kind of working in this way. Um, I used the Fire Guru one to test it. And this article over here that I mentioned, um, right, worth looking at. But um, what what we're able to say is, do the entire, and and this is this by the way we couldn't do in earlier models um, coming out of OpenAI. We're able to do this now because it's more discursive. Um, the models are, but um, we're able to say, do the entire answer, but then hide it and just give me the first paragraph and wait to give me the second paragraph until I ask for it, right? So it gives me one paragraph and then it says, if you want more, just call, right? And I say, okay, give me more, it gives me more paragraph. So this is a way for us to kind of chunk these large things and get students involved in, um, in responding back. Much um, needed much needed because there was so much reading involved. They were reading the text. They were reading their brain to write the prompt. Then the prompt, the thinking partner was given so much back. And then they said they had to read that and they might need to reread the text. Um, and it, it, it was a lot of reading. Uh, I think Lots questions. you could also yeah. try is you yeah. could also try to give it, to take the response as a whole and then create a separate thinking partner that can be applied to any thinking partner to summarize that thinking partner. So you run thinking partner A, which can be any thinking partner, through thinking partner B, which can which can which you can run any thinking partner through, mm -hmm. and then get the response, which would be a summarized version of what thinking partner A said. Yeah, I, yeah, perhaps. I don't love, I don't love what happens in a summary sometimes though, but yeah, no. that's worth exploring. Can I ask um, you, go ahead. Paul, you might, you. Yeah. You know, Please speak one, up, one, folks. Yeah. one of the things I noticed about, I've been using Otter AI when I'm on a webinar uh, so mm -hmm. that I have a quick, I don't have to take notes and it's a quick summary of what, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can look at the full transcript or a quick summary. But the uh, th thing that I have found most useful is the, um, that the key points rather mm -hmm. than, and so within within the text you could have a pullout which is either bolding some key points or what something like that so you don't necessarily withhold the information but you sort of point to sort of key ideas that the student can get to more quickly or not but, but where will they see the details though um, I'm I'm assuming that the the whole thing is visible and in a panel next to it the, the, yeah. the key. Okay. However, uh, Debbie, up. the key point idea. Yeah, yeah. So the thinking partner has to be designed into how to think about what key points are and what central themes are. Um, because I use Otter AI too in my transcripts during my data collection uh -huh. and it didn't always pick up exactly what i no of what course not have been picked up so no exactly that's the the whole problem with ai is that it doesn't necessarily isn't as smart as we think it is well, but, 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 <laughs> but, as we but, are but debbie i i i want to agree with that and then say let's not stop there and then david yeah. you want to say something because, but I because I think in our experience with with prompting, we can make it smarter, right? So where uh -huh. where where it's failing, um, and and where we say, you know, if I were making that summary, it would have been better. Um, let's make the AI better because yeah. I think we can. Let's not just accept that it's dumb, right? Let's yeah. Just, no, but I mean, it's, it's dumb, no but we can make it smarter. Yeah. it's dumb yeah. and it's biased and all that. But we can get yeah. rid of the bias with our prompting. We can get rid of the yeah. stupidity with our prompting. David, yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm on a, I'm One thing that's very energizing about <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. One thing that's really energizing about this conversation, I'm reminded again and again, and Aditya, thank you for setting this up with your, your 
Oh, what was it? Sidewinder? I forget the acronym. Side yeah. switcher. Side switcher. <laughs> Side switcher. Um, the more context and use case sort of you can bring to a question for the AI, the more complex your prompting becomes just instantly, right? Which is very different than summarize something for me full stop or check my check it for my references. I mean, there's different levels of, of engagement that you're seeking with your text or with your thinking process. But when one does an active thinking process, frames it, thinks about the different scenarios and designs a thinking partner to meet those objectives, it's a really, really robust thinking exercise. And to the extent that the software can track all the dependencies and the context that are in one's thinking, the better. And so that's one thing I'm really curious about, Paul, is watching the, the layers of thinking get staged in the screens that we're working with the extent they can, you know, because if that's the objective, then you can reverse engineer that to say, what is a student or anyone bringing to the AI first? How much work have they done? What is their, how ready is their essential question, so to speak? And I think uh -huh. getting to that as a first step, and Chris, you've talked about that in terms of bringing social connections, work connections, face-to-face -face work to the AI before you start to engage is so important. And there's so much to be gained from that. So I'm just cheering this along. It's very inspiring. Um, let's let's use uh, Debbie's uh, challenge here. I don't know if you saw it as a challenge, but um, and make a new thinking partner here at the end. Can we try that? Sure. Um, what do we want to name it? Uh, middle ground finder. <laughs> Finding common ground. Mm. Yeah, that would. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna use a little bit of both of you. <laughs> uh, common ground finder. Okay. And now, this would be a, and we don't have to get into this, but I, I think it's going to be a teammate. Yeah. Yes. Probably. What did you say? A, a what? Oh, so yeah, um, I'll I'll say this really fast, but um, that you you at some point you get to choose: is it a mentor, a tutor, a coach, oh, okay, a teammate, right? These are Malik and Malik's categories. Um, yeah, this um, a teammate does something they say increasing collaborative intelligence. So just mm. just arbitrarily, as we're starting, I'm going to pick okay. that one. Okay, yeah. um, and what does it do? Uh, finds common ground. <laughs> yeah, I try not to use the same thing. Finds points of agreement. Is that yes. right? Points of agreement and similarities of argument or or perspective. Common ground. Uh, <laughs> similarities. Uh, yeah, if I knew how to spell, it would help a lot. Okay, there we go. Similarities of what? Perspective is what I said. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I I just want to say, um, Jill Sadronsky, um, Aditya, and um, Rohan's teacher, um, in in she's done some prompting with some graduate students um, as well. And in the prompts, I noticed there's there's not much attention to persona. And I'll say this to her through this medium right here. I kind of get that. Like, why do I need to put a persona at the beginning? Can't I just have it do the argument or whatever? Here's what I here's what I've learned, and I have done. I have, there are some research papers on this that when you give it a persona, it actually the AI kind of looks. It like it, it establishes a discourse valley. Let's call it that. That's one of the researchers said a discourse valley that 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 the AI begins to recognize. And I know that's uh -huh. right. So so if we so I'm going to make that argument. If if we gave it a persona, what what would this person be like? Uh, a person who uh, agrees with everybody. Well, a diplomat for one thing. Maybe. Condoleezza oh, okay. Rice. <laughs> no. <laughs> Describe no. a diplomat. Respectful, respectful of thought presented. You know, you have to be respectful of thoughts per, per, and 
and be able to weigh out um, the advantages and disadvantages of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Bonnie. I think to be a good negotiator, you have to be able to distill out really key details so that you can hold them in relation to each other. Right. Which is, and so there's an action verb there that needs to be included. Mm -hmm. so. Is there an empathetic process? Yeah, yeah right. that's right. There's an right. empathetic, there's, there's, you're able to change, you're able to code switch or change your pers perspective and you're able to distill among other things. Yeah. Distill what? You, you can distill key, key subjects from other opposite points of view, right? Right. <clears throat> okay. I wish all of us were writing right now, but okay. But from. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> faster, Paul, faster. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think I'm losing some of this. Um, way out the, way out the, uh, what was that? The oh. advantages and disadvantages of, 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 I don't, I don't want to just say argument and I don't want to say perspective again. So well, we can, but, by, by the way, this language up here, um, yes. doesn't, doesn't appear anywhere. So we can copy it again. Okay. Of uh, the different perspectives. Yes. Just, just, just to get this or one. say varied. <laughs> Well, it's not really varied when it's coming from one person, is it? It sometimes it is. Oh, like my. what Adatia is saying oh, in debate. Yeah, I, and I did uh, a point I wanted to make earlier. I, 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 Chris Sloan, you, you were asking, is this making him a good debate, a better debater? Maybe not, you know? <laughs> Maybe we're realizing debate isn't such a great place to have ideas. But I'm just playing with you. Mm. I'm just, but, but it's, I, I, it is yeah. making him a great thinker and a great speaker. Yes. And that, that's yes. what the argument that I was having, not argument, but discussion I was having with my principal because he said, is taking away their ability to think. I said, no, it is not. It's making them think even more deeply okay. and, and quicker. I if, 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 Bonnie, there's an if there, if, if, the context allows them to do what our students here in this in this setting are, which is uh, d learn how to d design and build the skills to interact with the AI and, and, and be in control. But there's an argument that your principal is making that's absolutely true, potentially, yeah. if if we don't allow and support students to do the things that we're seeing right here in this in this context. And, and I what what the AI, what the side switcher pointed out to me is that to say that going to the model with your prompts um, is a better thing than going to chat GPT is not true because it totally depends on your prompts, <laughs> mm. right? So if you put really weak prompts in there, chat GPT is probably going to be smarter, right? So that's that's an in interesting thing for to think about. Uh, I'm, I'm watching the clock a little bit. But um, mm -hmm. we could expand. We have a pretty good persona. We have the beginning of what the we could expand what this looks like, right? What is what is what's the really definition of coming together with a common idea? Um, we also need something about what the output should be. What do you think the output should be? I I am. Um... I wonder whether that's what Debbie was saying. Like key output should be key I uh or how to say it again, Debbie. The output should be the themes and uh key ideas, key words. What else, Debbie? I was wondering whether rather than asking it for a it you could ask for a weighted list or you could ask for ideas along a continuum. So mm. that the middle of the continuum would be the place where the ideas were most closely related. And then uh, as you move out from the continuum uh, along the, uh, to the sides, you're getting to the most extreme points of view. Um, that don't have any connection to each other. I'm seeing it visually. Of yeah, course. yeah, I, I love it. I just don't 
Yeah, I can't write it What's fast. What's that, Rohan? What is that y'all playing I with? Rohan, we... <laughs> no, that's new. I want to know what it is. I want to learn you can, how to play with it. You can Shoot. show your cursor on the screen. And then you can point uh, at things, yeah. Rohan, did you uh, want to say something, or are you just playing? <laughs> I just wanted to know what that button does. Okay. Um, so, oh, yeah, you're on it. So, but, but at, in the middle, the, the, there is stronger agreement, and at the edges, there's less agreement? They're exactly. So you can actually visually see how how distance um, one side is from the other. If there's if you were to look and see that most of your arguments were weighted down one on either side, you know, yeah. versus. That's a, that's, does anybody here know if um, the model will do this? We don't know. But no, I, I don't have know. no idea. I mean, it's what I would do <laughs> in real life. I know. So. Guys, I'm really happy to see your eighth graders. Oh, it's all of you? Oh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, by the way, um, I, we just writing. Um, I just want you to know that separating these from writing and reading and both, both is not working. People aren't finding them there. So I'm, I'm working on that, um, okay. that user interface. But, but yeah. I, I do think it's kind of important to give heads up before you go in thinking partner and or copy thinking partners and make them for writing or for reading because they do different things. Um, I'm not going to make this public yet. I'm putting it in the GPT, if I can find it, uh, group. And we're going to keep working on this one. Okay, and cool. um, But let's um, – I'm going to hit create, though. Uh, so, and just to identify what I just did there, it's not public. Everybody can't use it, but if you're a member of the GPT Thinking Partners group, it will show up in <coughs> your dropdown. All right. Wait, I have a question. Uh, when yes. you when you toggle that, share this pink partner with this group. Does that mean you can't see it unless you're in that group, or does that mean that's correct? Okay. I so wish there was only, a way you could only, do both because I have only the maker can see it. What do you want to do? So, oh, go ahead. So what it shares with that group? Does it only share with the person who created it in that group, or does it share with the entire group, everybody in the group? If, if all of us were, say, in that GPT group, then would it share with everybody in that it group? It shares it with everybody in that group, yes. So there's no way – okay, I, I see – There's no uh, way to share it with an individual, is that what you're saying? No, uh, if I want to keep it – actually, that would be redundant. It's either – because if you make it public – then they can yeah. anyways see it. But I was wondering if you, I wanted to specifically... You can't, make, you can't make it public, though. Only I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, if you wanted to make that specific partner public... Ooh, never mind. Lost my train of thought there. Wow. No, no, already... so let me let me see if I, I can remember. answer that. Let me see if I can... If you've set up um, GPT groups, like, if, if, it, if you and Rohan have set up a common group, you could just drop it in that group, right? Okay. Yeah, and I Rohan see how that would work, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, um, for example, I and, dropped that side switch in that. Oh, yeah. Have you made the side switch partner public or, or? No? I did make it public. I, I, okay. I also copied it and put it both in writing and reading. We should, we could go on, but we should stop and get some final yeah. thoughts in what we might, might want to do next or thinking about this. Is this worth thinking about? Or I think it was a productive meeting, but some quick thoughts back. I think. I'll, I'll definitely, I have the debate this weekend, so I will definitely report back as to uh, what uh, what ended up happening. And also uh, that project, that one I was talking about, the presentation, oh, yeah. the, that is due next Tuesday. So me and Rohan, that's the reason we even came here, to start working on that one and the other one that we're doing. So that's, I know. so we interrupted your uh, I should have time to report that's about good. next week. Wonderful, wonderful. Good luck this weekend, guys. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Rohan, you have to go, right? Oh. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, Bye Rohan. Bye, Thank you for stopping by. Any other quick thoughts? Um, Thank you, Bob McCarthy, who isn't here anymore. Yeah, those guys are awesome. That's my they favorite. Are. They are. <laughs> they are. They are. And, and what, you know, Paul, you just opened up the floodgates for them to be the next developers of um, generative performance translation, um, GPT, something, you know, they'll do something. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Next, um, 
April 3rd, um, Jill Sidronski is coming with uh, a lot of her students. Okay. Um, and they presented at Drew. She took 14 of them to a Northern New Jersey uh, Teachers of English writing project meeting. And they all presented how they're using um, GPTs in their thinking and, and learning. So she's going to, so some of those kids are going to come and show us what they're doing. That's two weeks. They're going to do okay. Interesting. She said they need two weeks to redo their schedules. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know. All right. Debbie, thanks so much. It's always great yeah. when you're here. And thanks everybody who comes all the time. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really, and, I'm really sort of getting the hang of it. I think my next step is to actually look at that now comment now that I've talked to people. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you should, you should. I mean, we didn't finish that one, but you should try to make one too and see. Uh -huh. see yeah. Miss Bentham, I wanted to mention that I do, I am going to be talking about all this with Chris Lehman. I mentioned that to okay. you on, right? And I'm going to ask him if uh, what the principal over there at, uh, <laughs> at Bieber is up to. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if they talk to each other too okay. often. That's what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, okay. you know, you can mention it and you can tell them I'm using it. And Yeah, um, yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. All right. And my students love it. My students love it. So, I, you know, we'll see what parents say. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> that's okay. another layer. You know, things that are new, innovative, um, transformative. That's when public school parents act really goofy. But also, also, if I could say, are that are different. Like Bob yeah. made the point that your principal is right in many yeah. contexts, but in this context, he's not right. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's tricky. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye. Night night. See you, Cantrell. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Triple B.